Hello, this is <coughs> Professor Joseph Holbrook. Uh, we're going to be talking about Chapter 2 of Elgin Hunt's Social Science Introduction Book. And uh, Chapter 2 has to do with human origins. So let us begin with Chapter 2 of Elgin and Colander and uh, Social Science. So, the nature of humans are self-concerned uh, in terms of our origins, we want to know where we came from. We want to know what our destiny is. We're concerned about relationships. What is the meaning of life? This is the human existential dilemma. Socially, we're connected by geography. We're connected by family, community, country, and region. Which is how human beings are, how we are. Uh, most modern scientists agree that humans uh, originally appeared in Africa about five to seven million years ago. We came from ape ancestors, and our evolution produced the first human-like creatures, otherwise known as hominids. Darwin was the scientist who developed the theory of evolution which was a theory of a process of progressive change. Human evolution was popularized by the English biologist Charles Darwin. Also the concept of natural selection. He wrote The Origin of the Species in 1859 and The Descent of Man, sometime later in which he talks about the uh, evolution of human beings. Some of the important concepts in Darwinian evolution include uh, the idea of natural selection. Some characteristics are more favorable for survival than others, and the survival of the fittest. Also, the idea of mutation, which is random genetic changes. Er uh, Darwin was not the first theorist of evolution. Uh, actually, the very first was Aristotle, a Greek philosopher who came up with an idea of evolution and more recently in the 19th century were Lamarck and Linnaeus. Mutations may be neutral, beneficial, or fatal. Beneficial mutations make evolution possible. Over time changes in species occur. Random or accidental uh, mutations can be either. They can be increased by chemical radiation or exposure. On the genetic level, uh, mutation involves changes in the alleles. In terms of human evolution, the first humans arose in tropical areas. Later humans appeared worldwide. They had the ability to walk and make tools. Their diets expanded, which led to human physical and mental growth. By the way, one of the major ways that their diets expanded was that humans made the switch to be, being carnivores, which allowed them to uh, more easily get the, uh, the uh, nutrition they needed to maintain an increase in mental growth. Several different theories of evolutionary change. Darwin's theory is a, a theory of gradual change in which natural selection process over many millions of years gradually through a random mutation produces evolution and it's uh, a kind of microevolution. A couple theorists named Elridge and Gold theorized long periods of stability followed by or punctuated by sudden changes. It was a more of a stop and go process. For example, the possibility of a meteorite hitting the earth may have led to the elimination of the dinosaurs. Uh, this is a, a view of macroevolution and in some ways it gives some it gives some support to the idea by people such as C.S. Lewis of intelligent design. The timeline uh, billions of years ago one-celled organisms emerged only about 65 to 70 million years ago was the emergence of primates, uh, apes. Ape-like species from within the primates developed 
22 to 38 million years ago. And hominids, who were able to stand erect, emerged out of the apes 6 to 10 million years ago. Homo erectus was the first upright man, now extinct. And Homo habilis was uh, humans with the ability to use tools, to make tools as well as to use them, also extinct. And Homo sapiens was the shorthand for a reasoning man, uh, led to the development of modern man. This is a picture, a possible artist rendering of Homo erectus. So here you see the evolutionary chain coming from Australopithecus to uh, the sudden emergence of new species according to punctuated equilibrium theory, which included Homo habilis, the tool-making hominid, then Homo erectus, which had the ability to stand upright, and Homo sapiens. Genetic engineering uh, began with the discovery of DNA structure in 1953. Gene splicing makes gene manipulation possible in the 1970s. Genetic engineering involves the rearranging of genetic materials to make new life forms possible. The Human Genome Project has been developing research along the lines of human cloning or animal cloning. Cloning is a social and ethical dilemma. Plant cloning can be seen as beneficial to some extent. Animal cloning is limited and faulty and likely to produce mistakes. Human cloning has not yet been achieved. Most scientists believe that would be unethical, not yet accomplished. Embryonic stem cell research is still under debate so the question here is who will desi decide the government scientists uh, multinational corporations who should be the ones to decide about human cloning this uh, uh, brings me to a kind of a whimsical film with Arnold Schwarzenegger called the sixth day that develops the idea of human cloning in which uh, there ends up being two copies of this man and uh, you might want to watch it just for fun. Homo sapiens emerged from Homo erectus when it ch changed into two branches. One branch was the Homo sapiens, which led to modern humans. The other were Neanderthals. There is some evidence that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals may have interbred and uh, intermarried. Homo sapiens had larger brains, better tools. They emerged about 200,000 to 300,000 years ago, possibly even longer. They eventually supplanted all other hominids, and they were the ancestors of all modern humans, immediately following Cro-Magnons. So here's a picture of an artist's rendering of a possible picture of the Neanderthal. Not as bad as looking as you might have thought. And here's a picture of a modern Homo sapien with cool glasses. And so we see here the spread of human Homo sapiens beginning around 130,000 to 200,000 years ago in Africa and spreading out from Africa 60 to 70,000 years ago into the middle the Middle East, eventually into Europe about 40,000 years ago. Other Homo sapiens traveled up into Asia, unlike undoubtedly along what later became known as the, uh, the, the Spice Route, through Asia to Australia, Japan, and eventually from the across the Bering Strait into North Africa around 25,000 years ago, spreading to the east coast of North America around 12 to 15,000 years ago, and then down into South America 7,000 to 9,000 years ago. Interestingly enough, the first, uh, the oldest significant civilization 
in the Americas actually developed in Peru uh, was was about 7,000 years ago. So this is the chapter on human origins. I hope you uh, benefited from it. Please read the chapter and prepare yourself for the quiz. And we will move on to the emergence of Western civilization next. Thank you very much.